So recently I did a review on Forza Motorsport versus Gran Turismo and many of you in the comments let me know that out of the box Gran Turismo is ready to go whereas Forza requires some setting up in order to get the best experience from the game. So listening to my viewers I went back into Forza and I thought to myself it might be a great idea to do a video explaining what these different settings mean and share with you all my own personal preferences that I now use with Forza Motorsport. Keep in mind though what works for me may not work for you but I hope that in watching this video it at least helps with understanding what settings you're actually playing with. Forza will give you the option to choose overall what type of settings you want. Normal or simulation steering. The breakdown of this is normal steering will link system settings together to create what is defined as a normal setting. These links vary from inputs being tweaked and altering how the car will handle which the end result might mean that your steering feels sharper, however you do sacrifice the agility of the car for a more stable driving experience. Now if we go into the advanced wheel settings, we can further define what our driving experience will be based on our preferences, but let's understand what these settings do. Steering axis dead zone on the inside, think of this as how much you have to turn the steering wheel from a zero degree angle or dead center to get a response translated into the game higher the value, the more movement it requires before seeing a response in the game. Steering axis dead zone outside. Similar to the dead zone on the inside, this value determines the amount of steering required before there is a null effect on the car, or the car's turning circle is locked. The larger the value, the less rotational value will be recognized in the game. Steering axis invert. This would be used if you turn the wheel right and you want the game to respond by moving to the left. Essentially, the game will translate opposite to the direction of your input. Invert force feedback. So what this will effectively do is invert the force feedback which is being felt through the wheel, which particularly comes in handy if the wheel is interpreting the force feedback the wrong way. Like if you're turning into a corner at speed and you're not feeling resistance but the car is moving with you, then that's a good indication that you need to turn this on. Acceleration, deceleration, clutch and handbrake axis dead zone on the inside. So this is how much travel distance on the pedal is required before the game reacts. The higher the value, the more movement is required before the car responds. Acceleration, deceleration, clutch and handbrake axis dead zone on the outside. So the same as before, but in reverse. So think here, the higher the value, the less the accelerator will need to be pressed before the game registers that you have a fully depressed pedal. Acceleration, deceleration, clutch and handbrake axis invert. This essentially reverses the direction of the accelerator. So with this on, not pressing the pedal is like going full send. Vibration scale. Forza uses vibration as a feedback sensation to tell the player what is happening with the car in terms of the loads in the tire and braking traction. This setting will alter the amount of vibration pressure coming through the game and translating into the wheel. The higher the value, the more vibration the wheel will put out. Force feedback scale. This is the overall force feedback strength which is translated through the wheel from the game. This won't affect the vibration values, but more think about how turning a corner at speed and the resistance which would naturally translate through a car. Increasing this value would increase the amount of torque which the wheel outputs to the user. Aligning torque scale. This determines the overall torque which is delivered from the combined values of the mechanical and pneumatic trail values below. Mechanical trail scale. So this is a little more interesting to talk about. So think about the car's suspension geometry in relation to the tire. The assembly of the suspension connects the wheel assembly typically towards the center of the whole wheel and tire. And where the tire meets the ground is referred to as a contact patch. And the contact patch is an area which encompasses the wheel assembly onto the suspension but is also just outside of the dead center of the wheel. The difference between the point the suspension meets the wheel assembly and the furthest outside point of the contact patch is the mechanical trail, more commonly referred to as the caster. So think here of a grandfather clock with the pendulum swinging left to right. Well, now imagine the pendulum is a wheel and the stem which is holding it is a suspension assembly. Positive when the pendulum is moving towards the front of the car and negative when it's moving towards the rear of the car. So with this in mind, raising this value is going to affect how those caster forces are felt through the wheel. 
A higher value will result in a smoother experience, but will also mean less accuracy in terms of sensations coming through the wheel. Pneumatic Trail Scale Okay, so again, this refers back to the contact patch where the tire meets the ground. So think about if you are looking overhead at a tire, it would have an almost rectangular shape and the contact patch would be where the tire meets the ground. Then think about how the contact patch would change if the car was moving and cornering. It would deform the contact patch from the lateral forces of the tire. And this newly changed contact patch with the outermost edge referring back to the center is called the pneumatic trail. Lowering this value will reduce the effect you feel as you approach the point of braking traction. How these values relate to the aligning torque scale is that under lateral pressure, the car will want to center itself. So the higher the value, the more the car will want to center itself. Road feel scale. This setting determines how the feel of the road is translated into the wheel by taking the assumed physical wheel loads in terms of friction on the road surface. The road feel scale dials into the higher tension loads while leaving lower tensions alone. The higher the value, the more tension you will feel through the wheel while traveling at speed. Load sensitivity. Just like road feel, the load sensitivity is directed at the road surface. Bumps, cracks, and angle to determine the contact load of the car at speed. Lowering this value creates a more smoother experience, but doesn't allow you to really feel the track as accurately. This effectively sets how violently your wheel will want to return to center. The higher the value, the stronger the wheel will return based on the aligning torque scale. Wheel damper scale. So what this does to the wheel is effectively saturate the torque value of the wheel, giving the impression of being heavier at higher values. Steering sensitivity. This determines the degree of rotation that your wheel will undertake before entering steering lock, meaning you can no longer turn the wheel in that direction. The higher the value, the more turning is required. Steering linearity. This is the mapping between zero degree angle and full lock rotation. A lower value means closer to a zero degree angle, there is more accuracy in the smaller movements, but less accuracy towards full lock. Game pad steering filters. This is a filter designed for game pads and non-force feedback wheels to assist in finding the limits of traction without the assistance of force feedback. So finally, my advanced wheel settings so far are as you can see on screen at the moment. It's not yet perfect, but I feel like I'm on the right track here and I'm noticing a lot more responsiveness in the controls, which is in turn making the Forza experience a lot more enjoyable and I've found myself wanting to play the game more. It also tidies up some of my steering issues I mentioned in my previous video. Have you had the opportunity to play with the advanced settings and do you think there are improvements I can make in my current setup? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below.